All right, guys, let's talk about chapters four and five of Treasure Island. Now, chapter four is the sea chest. And to kind of summarize the sea chest, um, chapter four concerns with the dead man's chest, like the one in the captain's song. And Jim's mother thinks that Billy Bones' chest must hold the money that he owed her husband. He had not paid his bill for months. Now, certain that Bones' enemy will break into the inn to get whatever is in the chest, Jim and his mother go to the neighboring hamlet for help. But the name of Captain Flint and the sightings of the smuggler ship in the cove end up being too much for those fearful villagers. So, despite their warnings, Jim's mother, Mrs. Hawkins, is determined to get the money that is owed to her fatherless son, Jim. So she says that she's going back and she's very courageous and she takes Jim back to the inn to get the money. Now, building tension, um, the author describes Jim as overcoming his natural disgust and searching the pockets of the dead body of the captain for the key to his trunk. All while he is sitting there thinking scared about the blind man's arrival at any moment. And inside the chest they find this bag of gold coins that came from all kinds of different countries. But his mother really only recognizes the English money, the guineas. And she will not take a farthing more than she is due. So she won't take even a quarter of a penny more than is due to her. Now, his mother is slow to count them, and in the meantime of doing this, they start hearing this tapping of the blind man's stick on the frozen road outside, and they can hear him whistling to signal other pirates to come. And so Jim's mother decides to be satisfied with what she has, and Jim grabs this oil skin packet, and he says to square the count, meaning to make up for the fact that um, Billy Bones did not pay him what he was due either for keeping an eye out for the blind man, other pirates, and the man with the, with the missing leg. So they run out of the inn, but before they get very far, his mom faints. So he has to drag her down under a bridge to hide, but still within earshot so he can still hear inside the inn. And um, then when we get to chapter five, we read about what happens while he's there waiting. Now, to talk about the kind of the author's technique in this chapter, Robert Louis Stevenson likes to develop suspense through sound. If you guys have caught on to that, he really describes sounds so that while you're sitting there, you can visualize the sounds that Jim is hearing. So, there's kind of this, their eyes must be on the captain's body and the coins. So Jim and his mother must listen carefully for sounds of danger. And it says that the author def kind of uses onomatopoeia to heighten the tension. So first they hear only the wash of ripples. So this is, is the reading about sounds that you can visualize. But then we hear about tap tapping of the blind man's stick on the frozen road so you're you're able to visualize how scary that would be if it was quiet and you're sitting there by a dead body and you hear this tap tapping as someone coming down the road so you know it kind of creates this sense of suspense in the story it makes you want to keep reading to figure out what has happened so if I were to ask you, why won't the villagers help Jim and his mother? How would you describe that? Well, it was the name of Captain Flint that scares them because they all know he's a notoriously bad pirate. And they've already seen other pirates hanging around the inn. So those villagers are like, uh-uh, I'm not going to help. Where does Kim, or where does Jim Find the key to the dead man's chest. So ironically, it's hanging around Billy Bones' neck and is touching 
the dead man's chest, like literally, right? What they're referring to a treasure chest. So what was this piece of paper near the captain's hand? What does it say? And what does it look like? Remember, it has two sides. Good. One side has a black spot. The other side is says something. What does it say? You have until 10 tonight. Meaning something is coming at 10 o'clock. So why does Jim's mother take so long to count the money? Well, she really only knows one type of money in there, and that's the English coins, the guineas. She doesn't really know the other ones. And she may not be very highly educated either. So she takes her time and she counts them out. And she had to search through the money bag to find those coins. Now, what does Jim take from the captain's chest? He doesn't really know what it is. All he can tell is it is an oil skin packet. And if someone wraps something up in oil skin, it must be something that they want to protect. So he just grabs it and says, well, Take my chances and see what's in it later. We have no idea what's in it. So kind of the theme leading up to this point to chapter five, we've been exploring the limits of courage and desire for money and that both courage and desire of money is accompanied by strength or by luck, right? Either you're very strong or you're just really lucky. Okay. In chapter five, we read about the last of the blind man. And the first sentence of chapter five actually alludes to this courage theme that I'm referring to. When he says, Jim says, my curiosity was stronger than my fear. Well, is Jim being brave or is he being a fool as he comes out of hiding to hear the pirates better? Well, inside the inn, the blind man, Pew, is boss, and he's shouting orders and curses at them. And they find and search Bill's body. So they call him Bill. They are horrible in their single-minded single quest for the treasure map. They care nothing about the dead comrade that's lying on the floor. They're blaming Jim for taking Flint's fist. We don't really know what Flint's fist is yet, but it's something important to them. Hugh says he wishes he had poked the boy's eyes out, referring to Jim. And they ransack and smash the contents of the inn, so they just destroy the inside of this inn. Pew, so the blind man, even calls them cowards. If they had the pluck of a weevil and a biscuit, they would stay to find what they're looking for. He's, so he's calling his own comrades, his own men, fools, and, you know, that they're cowards. So because the pirates waste time arguing, quarreling about courage and their control for their desire for money, it gives the other men the chance to get there, right? The good guys from the neighboring hamlet. And it says that at the, well, and then Jim and his mother are saved too. And then at the final warning, a gunshot rings through. And these revenue officers, which are customs agents, are in pursuit of the smuggler. So they're chasing them. And in this, the blind man, Pew, runs into the path of these officers on their horses. And he gets trampled by the horse's hooves and killed. And then Jim tells the officers that he has this oil skin packet that was apparently what the buccaneers were searching for, but he really doesn't know what it means or what it, it has in it. And he says he's going to take it to Dr. Livesey, the magistrate. Okay. So one thing I want you guys to think about, okay, Pew is a blind man, yet he's the leader of his pirates. So he is a very courageous leader. Okay, imagine walking around not being able to see anything, and yet you are leading a whole group of men who can see. Okay, so he actually does have a lot of courage. Doesn't make him a good person, but he is very courageous and brave. 
All right. So again, sound is really important in chapter four and five where you're, you're reading and descriptions of the sounds that Jim hears as he listens to the pirates, but he must stay out of sight and quiet. Um, so for instance, when he said, suddenly I heard the tap, tapping of the blind man stick upon the frozen ground. Okay, rattling up our stairs, a slam and a jingle of broken glass. All of these sounds are what leads to the suspense, right, in the adventure that we're on in Treasure Island. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed.